Polaris Outlaw 70 EFI was a brand new ATV for 2021. Designed for riders age 6 and up, the fuel-injected Outlaw 70 replaces the highly popular Outlaw 50, offering riders more room to grow into. ATV On Demand's test of the Polaris Outlaw 70 EFI was made possible by Maxima Premium ATV Engine Oil, formulated for today's higher revving, hotter running, high performance engines. Exceeding OEM specifications, its proprietary additives create a sheer, stable polymer system, providing unsurpassed protection against wear, oxidation, viscosity, and thermal breakdown. Its wet clutch formula provides outstanding, fade free clutch performance. Maxima Premium ATV Engine Oil, available at power sports dealers everywhere. To put our Outlaw 70 to the test while evaluating its potential for rider growth, we acquired the services of Owen Kennedy and decked him out in F-16 riding gear from Fly Racing. Owen far exceeds the minimum age requirements for the Outlaw 70. We met up with him and his dad at one of our favorite ride spots, East Fork MX, located in Southwest Ohio, offering a cross-country race loop and a small MX track, perfect for the Outlaw. A 70cc air-cooled two-valve four-stroke engine powers the Outlaw. It's fed via fuel injection, which allows the engine to fire right up with a turn of the key and is ready to go with little warm-up time. A fully automatic, continuously variable transmission with no neutral means that the engine is in gear as soon as it's fired up. An efficient chain and sprocket setup transfers power to the rear wheels. To allow riders to progress at a controlled pace, there's a throttle limiter located under the left front fender, which can limit speed from a walking pace up to 15 miles per hour, where we left it for a majority of our testing. The fuse box and battery charging port are conveniently located under the seat. Unfortunately, maintenance points that you'll need to access more often are a little harder to reach. Three plastic push pins and a side cover will have to be removed in order to access the oil fill point. Two push pins have to be removed to open an access panel under the seat in order to access the air box. The Outlaw 70 is quiet enough that neighbors aren't likely to complain about an occasional ride in the yard. As you roll on the throttle, it takes a little bit of RPMs before the clutch starts to engage, which it does in a very smooth, easily controllable manner. Power delivery remains smooth throughout the RPM range, building RPMs in a very manageable way. The Outlaw 70 weighs between 30 and 70 pounds more than its 50cc competitors, and it uses 18-inch tires instead of 16s. The added weight and rotating mass seems to sap the 70's displacement advantage, leaving it feeling on par with most four-stroke 50s. Although the added tire size and ground clearance do provide a more comfortable and capable machine on the trail, the Outlaw's engine is capable of getting out and doing some exploring. Acceleration is decent, and the 70 will torque its way up some moderate inclines without issue. Add in a small bump, a little body English, and a healthy dose of throttle, and it's possible to gently loft the front wheels. Power is fun and adequate for younger, smaller beginner-type riders, but those with more experience might want a bit more pep. Smaller back tires and a different sprocket setup could pump up acceleration a bit, but not without a loss in ground clearance and ride quality. Water crossings are a common part of trail riding, Owen splashed his way back and forth across a relatively shallow creek repeatedly without a hint of engine sputtering or belt slippage from the transmission. Making up the Outlaw's chassis and suspension, a steel frame mates up to single A-arms up front with preload adjustable shocks found at both ends. Preload adjustment allows you to soften up the ride for lighter, less experienced riders who hit bumps at a slower pace, firming things up as your rider's weight increases and they hit bumps faster. Out back, there's a rather wide and unrefined looking swing arm with an unnecessarily complex chain adjustment system. With 4 inches of suspension travel at both ends, the Outlaw enjoys a generous amount of suspension travel compared to the 50cc 4-strokes and is very competitive in the 70cc four-stroke class. As we mentioned, Polaris chose to go with larger tires for their 70. 1878 front and 1888 rear O-board tires come mounted on stamped steel wheels. Dimensionally, the Outlaw is very similar to the other 74 strokes. At 35 and a half inches wide with a 37 and three-quarter inch wheelbase, 25 and three-quarter inch seat height, 
and an overall height of 35 and a quarter inches. Ground clearance is a touch low at four inches. It's also a bit on the heavy side with a claimed dry weight of 278 pounds. On the trail, the Outlaw 70 makes the most of its four inches of suspension travel, delivering a plusher ride than most of its competitors. Suspension travel is well matched to the capability of the stock engine. The ride is surprisingly good over small bumps thanks to its larger 18-inch tires and reasonably well-tuned shocks. Medium-sized hits from holes and bigger roots are well dampened at both ends, although we have to give the rear shock the nod for floating over nearly everything in its path. Small jumps and G-outs are dealt with without bottoming. However, if you upgrade the engine and add more speed and jumping becomes a pastime, expect to find the limits of the suspension pretty quickly. If your rider starts finding the limits of the suspension, you can firm up the shock's preload, which will help some. We noticed the rear tires rubbing the outside edge of the footwell when the rear shock bottomed out. We'd recommend running the chain adjustment all the way out, even if we had to add a link or two to the chain to keep the rear tires as far away as possible. The Outlaw is a stable machine in turns and on side hills, with only a moderate amount of body English needed from the rider. The 70 does well at going where it's pointed, although the steering was a little stiff on our test unit, as test rider Owen Kennedy pointed out. We've contacted several Polaris dealerships that we highly trust, who've not experienced this with the units they've had in stock. One thing that's not easily adjustable is the turning radius, which is pretty limited, giving the 70 a turning radius similar to a full-size adult ATV. This is undoubtedly to help keep beginner riders from turning the bars too far, making the machine potentially tippy. But it does make initiating slides more difficult for experienced riders. The Obor tires seem to perform everywhere on the trail, from dry hard pack to slippery muddy creek banks. They seem like a perfect choice for hitting the trail without being overly aggressive taxing the engine. We consider upgrading to a lighter aluminum wheel set and keeping these tires around for the long haul. The 70s brakes were upgraded from the Outlaw 50 with dual hydraulic disc brakes up front and a single hydraulic disc brake out back. A single handlebar mounted lever applies the brakes at both ends, with a floorboard mounted foot pedal operating the rear brake independently. The brakes offer decent power and feel, easily bringing the Outlaw to a complete stop and holding it back on downhills. The foot pedal is a touch tall, but the handlebar mounted lever should easily be within reach of most riders. The Outlaw 70 certainly offers more room for the rider to grow into than the Outlaw 50, although most six-year-olds shouldn't feel overwhelmed by its size. The seat is comfy and long enough for most riders within the machine's intended 6 to 10 age range. The foot pegs are tall enough to allow for the pivoting of the rider's foot, beneficial in rough terrain, and are a bit more difficult to bury when mud or snow starts piling up. The rear of the floorboards sweep up a bit at a moderate angle allowing taller riders to hang off the back of the machine while standing. The front fenders protrude a bit too far back into the rider compartment, getting in the way of taller riders' knees. Overall, the 70 is pretty comfy, encouraging more time out on the trail. The Outlaw 70 has some very cool features which help balance out our few gripes. We love the daytime running lights, helping make the machine more visible during the day. The sport-style front bumper is pretty stout and is ideal for lifting the front end of the ATV. Out back, there's a small plastic rack supported underneath by steel tubing. It's perfect for adding Polaris accessory cargo box, but doesn't offer much room for lifting the back of the machine. You can add an accessory grab bar from Polaris, but they've been coming as standard equipment on sport ATVs for decades. The included toolkit is located under the seat. We're happy to see it including a spanner wrench, making it easier to adjust the shocks. In conclusion, Polaris Outlaw 70 is an ATV that leaves riders more room to grow into than the 50 it replaces, in both size and overall performance. This should keep the 70's fun factor up for a longer period of time before it's time to step up to the Outlaw 110. With more displacement, fuel injection, disc brakes all around, larger tires and wheels, and an overall larger machine, Polaris has certainly packed a lot of features into the Outlaw 70 EFI for only $100 more than the Outlaw 50 at the time of launch. For us, the bottom line is this. While it's not perfect, with so much going for it, Polaris Outlaw 70 should have no problems putting smiles on the faces of up-and-coming riders for years to come. 
For more information on the Polaris Outlaw 70 EFI and the most expansive line of youth ATVs and side-by-sides on the market, visit PolarisOffRoad.com. Let's go!